So I heard you want to beat the Lost Sector fast. What's good guys, it's Zen, and I'm here with your daily Lost Sector guide. Now I have over 4,000 hours in this game, so if you listen to these tips, we will get those runs going as fast as possible for you and get those exotics. Now all of the information I dropped throughout this video is super concise and I drop relevant tips throughout the entire video. So be sure not to skip anything and watch the entire video for the best exotic farm. I'll give some additional info about this guide while I show you how to get there. But if you want, you already know where it's at. Feel free to skip to this time to get right into the guide. All right, now I'm gonna be honest, this is a mid-tier lost sector to farm. You'll be getting regular eight minute clears. If you use the exotics I recommend at the end, that'll drop down to six minutes, but that is still double what the best lost sectors clear at. The one saving grace is that this lost sector has many support followers who do damage to enemies for you. It is quite easy, it just takes a long time. If you really want to farm an exotic and don't want to wait for a better lost sector to be in rotation, then you're in the right place because with my tips, you will be getting the fastest clears possible. In this guide, I will be using no class abilities and no exotics. This is because I want this guide to be applicable to all three classes and useful for those who do not have certain builds unlocked. However, of course, exotics will assist your runs, so at the end, I will break down the best exotics to run if these options are available to you. And now that you know how to get there, let's get into the walkthrough. Let's quickly talk about the build, then we will get right into the walkthrough and exotic options. This Lost Sector has three overload champions and one barrier. It also has overcharged grenade launchers. With this in mind, we will be using a pulse rifle, grenade launcher, and a sword. The sword will trivialize all but the first overload and make them easy kills. The grenade launcher will absolutely melt adds, and as we will be needing a little bit of ad clear in this Lost Sector, it is a great pick. Finally, the Pulse Rifle will of course be great for the Barrier Champion. For the class build, we will be taking advantage of Solar. In this build, we will be using Artifact Mods. This season, we have access to Solar Surge, Flare Up, and Rain of Firebolts. These synergize excellently and make your Firebolt grenades quite lethal. If you land two grenades on one target, they will ignite, which is a large, high damage explosion. With these Artifact Mods in mind, we will of course be running Firebolt for our grenade. For our Fragments, we will need Ember of Ashes, Char, and Eruption. These fragments all bolster the power of our solar ignitions. Ember of Mercy will also give us a bit of restoration while collecting a fire sprite. Fire sprites spawn when you do damage with a firebolt grenade. For your helmet, use special and heavy ammo finder. For the fastest runs, we will need some ammo to drop. For your gauntlets, use as many grenade kickstart mods as you can. The artifact mod authorized mods grenades will reduce their cost to one, allowing you to easily slot three. For your chest, use two void resist mods and one solar if you can fit it. The boss and a couple other enemies do big void damage, and the first overload has a solar shotgun that does quite a lot too. These resist mods help. Finally, for your boots, add a scavenger mod that synergizes with your grenade launcher and sword. For me, that's solar scavenger. Your class item doesn't matter too much, but throwing on as many bombers as possible will help you with your grenade uptime. If you aren't a warlock, that's it for the build, and feel free to skip to this time to get right into the walkthrough. Now for warlocks, I have an unprecedented recommendation. Typically, I have all classes run the same build, and I leave exotics for the end, but I'd be kidding myself if I didn't mention this and it felt better to do here. If any Warlocks have access to Sun Bracers or Starfire Protocol, I actually recommend you use either one of these. These exotics trivialize this Lost Sector, especially with the Solar Surge. With Sun Bracers, you can rain fire from the sky, absolutely melting the boss since he likes to stand still. And we all know and love Starfire Protocol. Very consistent damage and you can use it throughout the entire Lost Sector. If you do not have access to these exotics, that's fine, since after the walkthrough, I give recommendations. For this Warlock build, you will want to run Well of Radiance, either Fusion or Solar Grenades, depending on which exotic you're using, Touch of Flame, and if you're using Sun Bracers, you're going to want to run Heat Rises, as when you get kills in the air, it gives you your melee back, which of course synergizes with Sun Bracers greatly. Ember of Eruption, Ember of Char, and Ember of Ashes. These three fragments will increase your ignition effectiveness and your overall damage. Finally, if you're using Starfire, you're going to want to use Empowering Rift, but if you're using Sun Bracers, you can use Healing Rift. All right, so hopping right in. We have one overload and a bunch of adds. First thing you're gonna wanna do is throw your grenade launcher and take care of all of these adds. That guy sitting on top there has one HP. That's why you saw me swap to my pulse. 
preemptively. Now I'm just gonna sit here until all these ads decide to peak because we're gonna drop down there with our sword to deal with the overload and we don't want to do that with a bunch of enemies. So now we're dropping down. Now this overload can be quite annoying and I'll show you what I mean right now. He can just teleport around for many minutes. I actually got very lucky in this run. After you take care of him, you drop up here, take care of that guy, and then the first door opens. Then we're going to conserve ammo by just shooting in a straight line, taking care of all those goblins at once, take care of this one, and we're going to shoot that little box. Now that box is going to play a critical role in this next room. If you shoot those boxes, you get a bunch of allies to help you out. Now we're going to take care of these guys, just shoot a couple grenade launchers. This is quite simple. Throw our fire bolt down. Second one actually didn't land, which is no problem. Collect that fire sprite, get a little restoration. We don't need it, but it's always nice. Clear that room. Very, very simple stuff. Then we're going to move forward into this next room. Now, this lost sector is very easy, actually. It just takes quite a while, mainly because of the boss. We're going to throw our grenade launcher down, take care of these guys. And then we're going to shoot those boxes, giving us whole bunch of allies that are going to help us out. There's one, there's two, and then there's one more in the back of the room. Looks like I'm actually going to take care of these ads first, but you see the third box. Now you have to clear these ads out before the next group of enemies spawn. And after you clear out those enemies, you can move forward to the final boss room. Now you're going to want to watch out for these hobgoblins as they can snipe you. Now that's very unfortunate that doesn't happen in the majority of runs but i decided to leave it in just as a cautionary tale so you could be careful of them now this cyclops you're going to want to deal with him with your pulse rifle he can one shot you you saw that burst of void damage just now that does one shot so anytime you see him charging up about to fire you're going to want to drop down completely but he gets in this like like lunatic phase where he just shoots everything randomly that's a great time to just stand still and do some damage took care of him very easily Take care of these ads, just throw some grenade launchers down. You're going to want to make sure that Minotaur is dead before you move up here to deal with the barrier. Because if he's not dead, he's going to chase you down and he's going to do a lot of damage to you. But standing right here is a great spot to deal with this barrier. You're going to stun this barrier. Unfortunately, he put his shield up from the allies doing damage to him. So I wasn't able to get the ignition off. Typically, you would get an ignition off and he would be very low. But we could just deal with him with our pulse, no problem at all. And we'll just clean him up with the sword. Very easy stuff. So now we have a whole bunch of little droid allies helping us. We're going to move forward and we're going to clear out some ads and that will spawn the next boss. Just toss our grenade launcher down. Be careful of these hobgoblins again. They do a ton of damage for some reason. Clear these guys out. We have one wyvern, but thankfully... Unlike Perdition, he's actually just a red bar, so he does have a lot of health, but a lot less than typical wyverns have. Pretty easy stuff, we're just going to throw our grenade launcher, hit him with the double firebolt, and he will go down fairly easily. I saw that 25,000 damage, that is the ignition damage that I was talking about. We're going to move back because the last thing you want is to be cornered by a wyvern. Get the finisher off. Very, very easy. Now you're going to want to make sure this room is cleared out. Because if it isn't, you you will come back to this room several times to fight, with, to fight different enemies. And if there's something sitting in the back, like this hobgoblin, it will catch you by surprise. You're going to want to make sure this room is cleared before you move forward. Anyways, moving back. Looks like we cleared enough ads, or the uh, the android helpers did, so that spawned the boss and a bunch of more ads. And from here, we are just going to deal with these ads first, and then we're just going to start doing damage to the boss. Now, after this walkthrough, I'm going to give some exotic options to make this run a lot faster, but we have none of these options because in this walkthrough, we're using no exotics to help as many people as possible. So this will take quite a while. We are uh, the only thing we can do here is just primary down this boss. I could use my super, but I want it to be universal to all three classes, so I'm not doing that either. So I will speed until the next phase happens. We 
try to get some fire bolt damage off, but it looks like the next phase has started. You see a champion has appeared, so we're jumping back. Whenever the boss does damage to you like that, just jump back. Even if you have your well, you will die in the well. We have void resist to try to live as many as possible, but it's really just to help us retreat. You can't really tank that. Okay, now the overload is on you, so you just jump back to where I'm standing right now. The overload will follow you, and you'll just sort him down. Yep. You just ambush him, and it's very simple. This guy dies very easily, unlike the first overload that can run around like I showed you. This guy just runs right into your face, which is fantastic. Take care of him, and then it's just rinse and repeat. You just keep doing this until the boss dies. There will be one other overload that spawns, and I'll show that. Taking damage, move back, no problem, no problem. You want to take care of these adds. Whatever adds are right in front of you, you'll take care of them. Same thing as before. And it actually looks like we finish off this boss without the overload jumping at us. Typically the overload would jump into your face, but he's just chilling up here for some reason. He's just <laughs> he's just targeted on these uh these friendly allies. So we're just gonna take care of him, and then that's it. We'll just open up the chest and that's the run. It's very easy stuff, it just takes a while if you don't have certain builds. So I will talk about those builds that will speed up your runs right now. Now let's talk about exotics. We'll start with weapons. Wither Horde is a great option as it will speed up killing every champion and the boss. With Wither Horde you will just run an energy pulse rifle and the same sword. Thunder Lord is another great option as it does good damage to the boss and stuns overloads. This will speed up your runs by a great deal since you won't have to chase the first overload champion down. Riptide with Chill Clip is of course not an exotic, but it is something not everyone has so I put it in this section. This gun will stun the overloads, so you won't need to run a sword and can instead run something that does damage to the boss, like a machine gun. If you still need a chill clip riptide, all you have to do is focus it at Shax until you get a chill clip roll to drop. Now let's talk about exotic armor. For titans, I recommend Lee Splendor Helm, Stronghold, and Actium War Rig. Lee Splendor is a great all-around exotic, as if you have a barricade charged, if you get low, it will consume your barricade and spawn a sunspot, which gives you a great healing effect in restoration. Stronghold is a great pick if you are using a sword, as if you block while taking damage, it heals you. Not many people use this exotic, and it's a shame because it is actually quite powerful. Actium War Rig is a great pick if you are using a machine gun, as it will let you blow your load into the enemy without as much reloading. The top pick for Titans is actually preference, it's up to you. If you are dying too much, use Laurely. If you aren't, then use either Stronghold or Actium War Rig, depending on the heavy weapon you chose. For Hunters, I recommend Shards of Galanor, Caliban's Hand, or Frosties. Shards of Galanor gives you super energy for landing Blade Barrage knives, so it will potentially let you use multiple supers on the boss. Caliban's Hand is great ad clear since if you get a kill with a proximity knife, it creates a solar ignition. This exotic is very fun to use, and if you haven't tried it yet, I highly recommend it. Frosties will give you high ability regeneration while sprinting. This will help you spam your firebolt grenades. My top pick is Shards of Galanor, as it will let you spam blade barrages, giving you the fastest clears. Now when we discussed the build, I already mentioned my Warlock exotic picks, so skip back to this time if you missed it. If these options aren't available to you, I recommend the Stag, as it gives you resist while in your healing rift. This combo of effects is essentially a mini well and gives you a great sustain. Now if you found any value in this video, a subscribe would be super appreciated. These videos are super in-depth content and I try to make them as useful as possible to everyone while also being short and to the point. I upload Lost Sector guides every single day as well as other good Destiny 2 and some Pokemon content. Either way, thanks for watching and good luck farming guardians. See you tomorrow for the next Lost Sector.